no, 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 no <laughs> No, I was <laughs> Es
Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here in this session. IO3, which is about sensors and systems. My name is Blanca Tolan. I'm going to be your chairman, and we are going to start with our first presentation. Uh, the title is Personalization and Smartphone Implementation of Agro Hearing Aid Amplification by Bayesian Machine Learning, and presents Nasser Ethar Navas. Uh, hello, good afternoon. My name is Nasser Ketan. I was I'll be talking about uh, personalizing a hearing aid prescription called ADRO, adaptive, uh, 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 adaptive system, this ad adaptive hearing aid amplification. This is part of one of my PhD students' dissertation that I'm going to uh, present. Let me just mention uh, a little bit about this prescription that is used in hearing aid, uh, adaptive dynamic range optimization. Based on the lowest level of hearing audiogram, the highest discomfort level, and what is called comfort target, uh, gains are arranged, gains are set up. Uh, and then what this algorithm does it uh, uses a number of rules to set the right amplification gains. Um, this diagram illustrates basically the different percentile of sound pressure level, how these uh, sound pressure levels are adjusted depending on the lowest level of hearing, comfort target, and highest level of hearing. There are a number of rules that are indicated here that are used in this uh, uh, prescription. It's a prescription that is used basically to adjust amplification in hearing aids depending on uh, how strong or weak that sound signal is. Now, we've been wanting to personalize uh, this uh, prescription and other prescriptions. What is meant by personalization? Um, the, the standard ADRO uh, uh, patients are not happy. 50% of patients are not happy with the standard ADRO. The reason is, is that uh, these prescriptions uh, this prescription is basically not optimized for a specific user for a specific sound environment. It's done based on basically a population of users. And uh, it has it's had been well established in the literature that if we take uh, a prescription and personalize it for a specific user, satisfaction level uh, would be high. So the aim of this paper has been to personalize this uh, specific prescription and implement that personalization on a smartphone platform so that we can do the personalization in real world setting. Um, uh, my lab, we've been uh, involved in uh, personalization of uh, hearing aid prescriptions. We used to, our first generation involved using deep reinforcement learning, but this approach needed to be trained in an offline manner. Our second generation personalization algorithm 
we use uh, 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 maximum likelihood inverse reinforcement learning. We made the training online, but it, it did, this second generation is a slow. It takes a couple of hours of training. Now, the third generation of personalization we've come up with can do this in a very computationally efficient manner within five minutes. Uh, so the objective of this work has been to personalize ADRO using this third generation personalization solution. And then, of course, have a, a smartphone app implementation of this uh, solution. Very quickly, let me uh, let me give an overview of what this third generation personalization uh, algorithm is doing. We define a number of hearing preference function in a number of bands or channels. And then we use basically Bayesian learning to estimate this hearing preference function. And then once we get the maximum value per frequency band or channel, if you we connect this uh, highest frequency, highest hearing preference, we get our amplification curve. Amplification curve indicates how should we amplif uh, amplify a sound in different frequency bands. What are the advantages of this uh, new uh, machine learning approach? Uh, online training, as I mentioned earlier, can be done quite uh, fast. If you have two for only 28 per comparison for eight levels uh, of hearing preference function, we can do it in less than five minutes. And it's uh, scalable to any number of frequency bands or channels. Some hearing aids use nine, some hearing aids use 11, 16, 21 frequency bands. So it doesn't matter. Uh, it still it takes the same amount of training time. Uh, to do it for different types of uh, hearing aids. Uh, so very briefly, the algorithm, we have a Bayesian framework, we have the user feedback, and then we have the prior probability, which is modeled as a Gaussian process. What we are trying to do is find the preference function that maximizes this posteriori probability. And then, of course, the parameters of the models we've considered needs to get estimated too. So the estimation is done in two steps. First, we use Laplacian approximation to get an estimate of f or next f. And then we fix f and get the optimal parameters uh, uh, for uh, that f. And this is done in an iterative manner until uh, we reach convergence. Uh, so uh, this is the mechanism, and okay. the the way this is done uh, is we just do paired comparison. Very easy for users to uh, to to do. Is this sound better or is this sound better? It's very much like when you have an eye exam, and you see uh, with this lens better or with that lens better. The same the same setting. Very uh, easy uh, for the uh, to do this training, uh, uh, you know, by patients. Okay, so we did the, we did this subject uh, study. Uh, we needed to get uh, permission to do subject study. We got this permission approved. Uh, we cannot just do subject study without having this permission. So uh, we did the training first, and then going through or eight levels, 28 pair comparison. Is this sound better? Is this sound better? 28 times, which can be done quite fast. And then once the training is done, we compare the standard prescription, what is this, what is being prescribed in a standard way, and personalized prescription. So we compare the standard to personalized. In a, and then the user listens to this sound uh, of course, we randomize. The user doesn't know which sound is played first. And then uh, based on that, we can determine whether uh, which, which of these two settings the user prefers. A standard setting is preferred by the user 
or personalized setting is preferred by the owners. Oops. This is the 10 uh, subjects that this was done in a sound booth. You see that there is a difference between the standard comfort targets and personalized comfort targets. Personalized comfort targets are reached after Bayesian learning. So this is the standard prescription. The one on the right is the personalized prescription. And this, what you see in this bar chart, the preference uh, of this subject uh, for personalized, a standard, or whether they thought that this for them it was the same. And you, you can see that these numbers are in percentages. Uh, that personalized was preferred by by a lot compared to uh, a standard prescription. Um, all these experiments, all these experiments done in background noise, normally babble noise at five dB signal to noise ratio. So we established that here, if we personalize ADRO, this hearing aid prescription, we keep uh, users, patients prefer personalized version to original the standard version. Now we took this algorithm now, uh, created an app out of it because we want uh, uh, users to be able to uh, do the training in real world setting, in real world audio environments. So we wanted to basically keep the latency down uh, here to keep the latency down that the sampling rate needs to be done on a typical smartphone at 48 kilohertz. So we bring, we do the, we bring frames at 48 kilohertz and then bring the sampling rate down. We do all the processing at one third of sampling rate. Why do we want to do this? Because if we have more samples, it takes more time. We may not be able to meet real time. Uh, we have here both iPhone and uh, Android uh, say for 10 millisecond frame on iPhone, typical iPhone uh, frames need to get processed in two millisecond on an Android about 1.3 millisecond. There are different types of, I mean, on, on iPhone 1.3 millisecond on Android two millisecond. There are different types of Android depending on the optimal frame size. So that the, this is the sort of showing the signal processing pipeline but how we manage to have low latency at the same time to meet real time constraint, to process 10 millisecond frames in less than two milliseconds. Uh, this is sort of the smartphone app attributes. As you can see, uh, on average, uh, we can process 10 millisecond frame in 1.2 millisecond. There is not that much burden that is uh, uh, put on the CPU, only 9% of the CPU is used and not that much memory. The app doesn't take that much memory, 42 meg, 43 meg. Um, on Android phone, the latency is more than iPhone. iPhone latency is less. So normally latency on Android phone uh, is uh, 50 millisecond. On iPhone is about 10 milliseconds. Uh, so we repeat the whole thing, this subject testing, now with the app, not in a sound book, but with the app. This is the, what you see here are the app GUIs. Uh, so we basically play sound using comfort target A, comfort target B. So uh, uh, a subject would listen and then indicate whether they prefer A, prefer B, or no preference. That's part of the training uh, process. Two minutes, yeah. Two minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll speed this up. Uh, and then this are again, you see, uh, you see the difference between personalized comfort and standard comfort target. Again, the preference uh, uh, subject testing only for one subject preferred the standard testing over the personalized. All the other subjects prefer the personalized setting. Uh, let me show you this video clip that shows the that shows the that shows.
is referred over the, uh, the standard city. So what we've done here in this work, we've applied our third generation personalization to this specific hearing aid prescription. We've shown that personalized setting is preferred over the standard setting, and it can be done in a computationally efficient manner. Just within this than the whole training testing can be done in less than five minutes. And uh, as you saw from the bar chart, uh, the subject testing we've done, uh, they indicated that personalized setting was better, about six times better than on average uh, than the standard setting. Thank you very much. Any questions? Questions? I have a doubt. Uh, in your personalization uh, step, who is doing the personalization? The, the user? Or is uh, the medical staff that is going to do this personalization in the app? Very good question. There are two ways of doing this. The sound both way is basically the uh, medical personnel is playing this sound in the sound booth for the person sitting in the sound booth and this the uh, smartphone version is the user is actually doing the training one two one two okay. so so there are two versions no regular hearing aid this is connected by bluetooth and basically the hearing aid, the, uh, the uh, prescription is set to flat. So there is no amplification done by the hearing aid. So they're, they're still wearing hearing aids, but the amplification is done on the phone. Okay. So this is, the, then they go through the training and after the training is done, they go to the testing tab and then do the big thing decide whether they prefer the standard setting okay. or the personalized setting. The user using the, the smartphone is in a special room or it can be in any room or any environment? The, the, the whole point of the app is to be in any environment with different background noise. Say for one background noise, the user may prefer one setting for another background noise, say in a babble type of environment, they may prefer a different setting. So they retrain it for that environment that they, they are having the difficulty to communicate. So, for example, if they go to a classical use, so they have to retrain it to, to have this because, uh, what well, I suppose this could be silence and just hearing the music. Correct. Yeah, basically, it needs to be retrained for the environment they are having. The, the, the main thing here is for them to have communication and background noise. So in music, it sort of doesn't create as much difficulty uh, for them. Of course, they can, they can do it. They can go through a very quick training, a couple of minutes that they are li listening to music and personalize it for themselves and leave it at, at that personalization uh, amplification. Uh, yeah, but it can be done both ways by the medical uh, per personnel to do it in a sound pool or by user, uh, you know, so you have a smartphone is by is done by the user. The, the GUI, another GUI version is done by the uh, medical personnel. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. So, let's move into our second presentation. And the title is Development of Mobile Interface Around Electrons for the Acquisition of Bioelectric Potentials. 
presents uh, Oscar Eduardo Aguilar Financiera. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Oscar Aguilar and I am talking about my project, uh, project development of novel decreased ceramic fluids for the acquisition of bioelectric potentials. So it's the content of the presentation. And first, as introduction, uh, the acquisition of bioelectric potentials is essential in various areas of biomedicine, including the diagnosis and monitoring of diseases, as well as research in neuroscience, cardiology, and uh, some other areas of uh, clinical interest. The proper selection of electrodes is crucial for the quality of the collected signals, and I, as they must uh, possess specific properties to ensure uh, high sensitivity and minimal interference. Now uh, talking about uh, materials, some ceramic materials have attracted uh, considerable attention due to their exceptional physical and electrical characteristics. Uh, potassium niobate, AMBO3, is one of the most, uh, sorry, is one of those materials known primarily for its non-linear um, optical properties. This material also has a range of attributes that position it as an interesting alternative uh, for the acquisition of bioelectric potentials. Its high dielectric constant, chemical and mechanical stability, and ability to operate at a wide frequency range, and make it a promising candidate for developing advanced electrodes. Now let's talk about the background. Uh, this material, uh, potassium niobate, is a lead free crystal material from the Perovskit family with this uh, structure, with optical and electrical characteristics comparable to those of other uh, lead containing crystal in compounds. This feature makes uh, this material an excellent alternative in biomedical instrumentation over leaf content materials uh, because of the low health risk. So uh, this material has uh, some properties uh, like ferroelectricity, fer piezo electricity, uh, light absorption properties, high dielectric constant, fiber electricity, and more. So this material has the um, it reacts to mechanical stimuli, to uh, temperature changes, um, electric fields, among other uh, phenomena. This is a uh, this material, uh, potassium niobate, is a versatile option for various purposes, including energy storage, lead-free electromechanical applications, optical and acoustic sensors and actuators, and even for the catalytic applications for environmental purposes. And now I'm talking about some uh, developments that have been carried out in the field of bio, bioelectrical signals acquisition, specifically that use uh, ceramic materials. And previous research has employed PLC uh, with platinum implantation as an insulating device in an ECG acquisition system where various material parameters were measured, like its impedance in the range of giga ohms and its leakage current in current in the ratio of nanoamperes. Mm. And that, that demonstrate that polypropylene ceramic materials provide secure insulation for bioelectric applications. And in this uh, figure, we can see an arrangement of uh, ceramic where it was used as uh, an opacity sensor in, for biological tissue uh, analysis. Uh, there are some other developments uh, where PLC ceramic materials have been implemented for detecting cardiac micropulses and as a piezoelectric plexmograph, demonstrating their capability to obtain clinically relevant information from the human body. Some of the recordings of human body activity can be carried out with these kind of materials. However, uh, these materials don't, um, are not used directly in the skin, uh, like uh, by stalker liberty and sleep by signal detection. Now, uh, this is the main objective of the project. This study aims to investigate the use of potassium niobate uh, ceramic electrodes in acquiring bioelectric potentials, evaluating their performance in detecting bioelectric signals. We have some specific object objectives, like um, to manufacture uh, potassium niobate ceramic samples with a platinum implant, to observe the output signals using the ceramic samples as electrodes in an instrumentation system to acquire bioelectric potentials, 
And finally, to compare the signals acquired with the proposed ceramic electrodes to those acquired with conventional silver electrodes. Now I'm talking now, now about the methodology for this research. Um, potassium niobate ceramic samples with platinum implants were prepared using the sintering method. Uh, we ourselves uh, manufactured the, the ceramics uh, by means of already validated methodologies like sintering, in which uh, our samples uh, are heated to high temperatures. The compound was used in, was used in its commercial form for mileage, and we produced disc weighing 1.4 grams with a diameter of 1 centimeter and a thickness of 3.7 millimeters. And in our sintering process, we used a, a temperature ramp uh, reaching 800 Celsius degrees. In this figure, we can see uh, the placement of the PT wire, the platinum implant inside the ceramic. And in the other figure, we can see one of our samples with the wires welded, one to the, the implant and the other one to, the, to one of the surfaces. Now, this is a, the instrumentation where we propose for acquiring bioelectric signals uh, using these ceramic electrodes. You can see, uh, we use two ceramic electrodes connected to an amplifier, a bio, bio amp, a 100 amplifier, with a third electrode as an L2, as reference electrode. After that, we use a locking amplifier. This device uh, amplifies only the content of the signal in a, deter in a determined uh, frequency. And finally, a uh, fusion monitor to observe the recording. Uh, in this case, uh, the BioAmp 100 amplifier, amplifier just provides insulation, uh, despite the fact that we can acquire the, the recordings just with the locking amplifier. Uh, we use the the value 100 amplifier to provide uh, insulation and to have a safety record. We have the objective of um, use just the looking amplifier, but we have to do more, more um, studies about the, the impedance of the samples. So we um, carried out three different arrangements of uh, our electrodes to acquire an ECG, an EMG, and an EOG. First, for the ECG, two, two ceramics were placed on, the, on each wrist, and the, the reference electrode was placed on the left. Yeah. Then, for the EMG recording, we placed two electrodes on the biceps, and the electrode, reference electrode, uh, in, on the left leg. And finally, for EOG, uh, specifically for up-down saccadic movements of, of the eye, we place uh, one of our electrodes in the upper part of the eye and the other one in the lower part of the eye, with the reference electrode on the opposite here. Um, reference electrode is a conventional electrode in all cases. The acquiring, acquiring electrodes are just the two electrodes A and B. C is a conventional electrode. Um, so we um, recorded simul simultaneously signals using uh, our ceramic electrodes and conventional silver electrodes. So this is the, the arrangement for obtaining the signals from the conventional silver electrodes. We have uh, again two electrodes A and B and a third reference electrode C. Uh, for this arrangement, we just used the bio amp 100 amplifier because this is specifically for, for those electrodes and also the fishermen. So we can see the results here. Um, the blue signal was acquired with uh, silver electrodes, and the yellow signal was acquired with our ceramic electrodes, with the arrangement I showed before. Uh, as you can see, in both cases, we can see uh, an ECG signal, not easy, but it is clear about to. Uh, to distinguish uh, QRS uh, segments and key waves. This is the result of the recording of the EMG. Uh, in all cases, blue signal was acquired with conventional silver electrodes, and yellow signal is acquired with our ceramic electrodes. 
time. This is the recording we obtained for up down uh, saccadic movements of, of the eye. Here you can see uh, some more examples of our recordings of ECG, EMG, and EOG. So uh, that were our results. And now a discussion of results. ECG signals could be recorded using these uh, potassium iodide ceramic electrodes. Although the recording uh, shows noise and high frequency interference, the QRS reflexes and T waves can be easily, easily distinguished. Compared to the recording with conventional electrodes, the recording with ceramic electrodes has a similar amplitude range around 250 millivolts, and the heartbeat is easily recognizable with both types of electrodes. For EMG recording of uh, the biceps, uh, two muscle contractions can be clearly observed with both, cer both ceramic and conventional electrodes. However, the recording with ceramic electrodes exhibits a uh, higher amplitude as well as less significant information. And finally, for the EOG recording, uh, we recorded four events, the up-down movements. Uh, these events are identifiable with conventional electrodes. However, the signal amplitude is very low and noisy compared to the recording with ceramic electrodes. And later, the four events can be identified in the signal with a very signal to noise radio and sufficient amplitude to distinguish the recorded uh, events more easily. Now, uh, our conclusions. Uh, the result of the various recordings demonstrate the ability of ceramic material of a ceramic material like uh, potassium niobate to respond to the small field, the small electric fields uh, generated in the body. Other further efforts and work are needed to obtain better recordings, and it's evident that the ceramic electrodes and the proposed instrumentation can be an alternative to conventional metal electrodes. Uh, perhaps if family crystals possess high dielectric constants and electric resistance in the range of giga ohms, uh, these characteristics could be could greatly benefit bioelectric potential potential acquisition systems by offering electric cattle. Uh, insulation for the patient directly from the electrodes, um, thus potentially simplifying the required instrumentation for these systems. Much of our future work in research will focus on determining, determining the insulation provided by these material electrodes by, measure, by measuring either impedance and leakage current, which could lead to reducing the necessary instrumentation for the implementation. Additionally, future work will involve an experiment with experimenting with the proposal is proposed instrumentation to acquire other bioelectric potentials like electroastrography or electroencephalography. Uh, we haven't carried out a, a more deep, a deeper analysis to our signals, so like a, a frequency content or something like that, but this uh, some data. Some, Thinking is going to be involved in the future. Sir, our references. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Okay. No? Uh, okay. <laughs> Can you show me your slide number 22, please? It's about electronic noise. Yeah. The blue one is from commercial electrodes and the yellow one is from your electrodes, yes. right? Uh, well, I can see a difference there. Yes. Uh, they were taken simultaneously. Yes. But I can see, less, well, I'm very close to each other. <laughs> in the biceps. Mm -hmm. And very close to each other. The electrodes. I mean, the commercial ones and your electrodes were very close to each other in the same area. I mean. Yes, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the locking amplifier works specifically at one frequency. So uh, if we configure that frequency, for example, here, um, this is EMG2, mm -hmm. and we use you, we use the different frequency here. If we play play with the uh, the frequencies to. To find the, the better. So I remember this uh, the recording was with a different uh, frequency. Oh, I see. Because, yeah, I can see that. Uh, yes, you are not recording the information. But my question was uh, 
well, yes, about the frequencies, mm -hmm. I can see that you do not have the same uh, bandwidth as the commercial ones. But about the position of uh, the okay. on the muscle, they were next to each other. Yes, yes, uh, uh, okay, so we uh, place uh, uh, commercial electrodes uh, at one centimeter. Uh, because with the ceramic the photography the differences well, also in electrography there are so yes. so it is highly dependent on uh, the bandwidth is a difference yes. from from the commercial ones um is there a possibility that you make different electrodes for different signals, or are you planning to make one electrode that works for all these signals? Yes, that's the idea. The bandwidth yeah. is different for each biological signal, right? Yes, we are... The, the idea is to have just one kind of electrode for all the different signals and configure different frequencies in our locking amplifier. <laughs> that frequency is most uh, reach the same frequencies of the bio. For example, in this uh, recording, our reference frequency was uh, 1.6 Hz. For uh, EMG, we used uh, about 50 Hz. And here, uh, 50 Hz again. So we can configure our frequency uh, for each value of tension. Okay, are they right and close? Do they need are dry, they are dry electrodes, but we use a conduct, conductive test between the surface of the electrode and the skin. The same as the metal ones? Uh, yeah, but the metal electrodes we use has their own. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. Okay. Okay, let's continue with our third presentation. <laughs> and the type of this thermomagnetic membrane for open control and laser pattern and And for sense, Victor Garcia. Good afternoon. I sent this report. I styled from membrane for opening, control, and laser pattern analysis. So we have a conflict, the presentation, and the objectives. Like general objective, we have to design an element that will participate the supply and magnetic control of John flow. In particular objectives, we have the fabrication of thermodynamic membranes to point for the spin microbi. Second, the, to develop a novel device for laser pattern analysis of thermodynamic membranes. And here, to analyze the laser for pattern obtained from a thermodynamic membrane, considering the effects of the magnetic field. For the introduction, in this story, for magnetic mem membranes, the egg from a polymer solution were employed with the objective of regulating the flow of liquids, pharmaceuticals, and steam in biomedical applications. Well, uh, like I mentioned, we use the electrospinning technique, and it has a principle that is a strong electric field is applied the charged polymer solution, which generates a thin steam of polymer that solidifies into ultrafine fibers. Our sample preparation consists in PLA, magnetite, PBF, and the MF. It consists in a controlled temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, Using a flow rate of 10 milliliters per hour and applying a high voltage of 20 kilovolts. 
Uh, this solution well depends to our three cubic centimeter syringe. And the tip of this syringe was uh, positioned 15 centimeters from the collector plate. In the following diagram, we can see in general terms the electrospinning tape that consists in a high voltage source that's applied directly on the tip of polymer uh, of syringe of where is contained the polymer solution. This voltage generates a positively charged jet that is collected in the copper collector plate and forms in the drop, in the tip drop, that in your cone there is a distortion in the drop that help to generate these nanofibers. As a result of the process, we obtain nanofibers like this. Uh, like I mentioned, we need to analyze this image pattern and we have to design uh, a device that helps us. This device consists in the following elements. A laser, a digital gravimeter probe, a concave lens, the ferromagnetic membrane that is positioned next to the electromagnet, and we obtain the laser pattern. Well, this image represents the start of our device, but at the end, we, go, we can take the picture of the pattern that we obtain. Here we can see the real device. At this point, uh, we put a camera with the solar luminous. This image represents our pattern. And we obtain this image from a 94 micrometer seed. Here we can see that the amplification is uh, without distortion and represents an image very clear. This image uh, represents how we record the results. In the way, we have the Gauss meter, and in letter B, we have the projection of the member. To analyze these images, we selected the process of segmentation that consists in put the images in color in black and white to make measures. Here we can see uh, these six measures obtained from the lesser patterns, and it uh, are in increases of 100 gauss. It's important to notice at this point that the white areas are increasing. The segmentation process brings us uh, pixel units, but we need uh, area. We change these pixel units to micrometers, square micrometers. And we can see clearly how if we uh, increase the magnetic field in Gauss, we can take more pore opening in square micrometers. Well, this technique allows the control of this opening area about 5.53%. In conclusion, the results confirm the ability to control membrane more carefully by applying a magnetic field. This advancement provides significant development in contactless aperture control and allows for a deeper analysis of nonfiber patterns. 
it is proposed to test different magnetic and polymeric compounds. And for future research, we propose tests on magnetic control of vapor, liquid, and light flow for biomedical purposes. These are the references of the work. Thank you for your attention. These are our contacts. Any questions? Please. I have a question. Um, what would be a commercial equipment, if there is any, that you can compare with your post? Uh, no, there are serious. Only, well, like this is a new technique and this is a novel equipment that we have been developing. Uh, we can compare the our results. Mm. Exist a uh, publication uh, that controls the flight, the light flow, and we know that it's possible to control the magnitude or with magnetic field. But exactly take um, like this lab, uh, how many square kilometers are open with a specific magnetic field, uh, we can compare it. Only we can know because we have the results and we compare with the flow, with the steam flow, light flow, sorry, <laughs> with light flow that is reported. Hi, good afternoon, Pantadios. Are you ready? Uh, Yes, uh, can you hear me clearly? Please, you confirm you can see my camera. Do you confirm? Do you confirm? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Can you hear us, Pantelios? Can you hear us, Pantelios? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, anything you can tell me when I can share my screen? Could you start sharing, please? Okay, may, may I start? Yes, we can see your presentation. Okay. 
I'm going to present you. Okay, let's start with our uh, fourth presentation today. The title is Operating Conditions for Performance Improvement of Fair Emitted Detector Diode in Optical Measurements Based on Photocapacitance Discharge. And presents Juan de Dios Ortiz Alvarado. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I appreciate your attention. Uh, well, we are going to, um, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, show you the, the work I, we are making in instrumentation for optical uh, devices. We're uh, making on uh, Unidad Profesional Interdisciplinary Ingeniería. Okay, let's start. Uh, the light emitting the old, uh, um, uh, uh, recently has uh, uh, increased their application as an option, uh, a low cost detector with uh, spectral selectivity. Uh, this uh, is uh, attractive because these avoid the requirements for optical filters and reduce the requirements of uh, uh, and signal conditioning circuits. But uh, there had some drawbacks. Uh, for example, the responsivity spectral band is wider than the emission bands, but uh, it is um, um, uh, had uh, some um, uh, reports where we had, we had uh, uh, valuable uh, applications. For example, uh, there have been reports, their application in uh, some photometers for uh, detection of uh, aerosols on, on the atmosphere and uh, some other components, for example, for example ozone. Another application, it was uh, apply the LEDs at, um, at detector is for a numerical, a numerical differential voltage index and for quanti quantification of the chemical components. Uh, for example, I heard we had application for the detection of proteins, and uh, another application that it was uh, it, it has been reported for uh, water quality inspections and specifically for um, uh, turbidity measurements. Well, the typical uh, pair emitter detector diode configuration is an scan where it is used a uh, LED as emitter and LED as detector for analyzing the concentration, absorbance, or dispersion of some, uh, uh, some sub substance uh, for uh, optical correctation. And, and the, the most used uh, signal conditioning circuit for this scheme is the transimpedance amplifier. And this is uh, preferred because their linearity and simplicity. However, it is, is necessary to uh, indicate that the feedback resistor uh, could be a, a noise, um, and, and a noise it can induce noise in the output signal obtained from this uh, scheme. Well, uh, and an alternative to, to this uh, application of LED as detector is the photocapitans photocapitans times measurement light density quantification. Um, uh, this scheme is uh, is uh, simple, and for this it is used um, connection to the LED detector, the GPO uh, general purpose input output terminal, and a LED accelerometer. In this application, uh, the GPO terminal is configured at output. Then uh, a charging phase is uh, produced in the LED detector and uh, a voltage is uh, produced and in the output uh, phase. Uh, uh, once uh, time elapses, uh, the GPU, GPU um, terminal is uh, configured as input, and then the, uh, the internal capacitance of the LED 
is uh, described in the in, in internal impedance of microcontroller. Well, uh, this scheme uh, is, attractive, is attractive for his hardware simplicity and his high sensitivity for implementation of EOT and wearable devices. The recent reports describes the effect of the algorithm for time discard measurement of the accuracy for optical properties determination, but had not be considered another factor related to microcontroller, microcontroller operation. The evaluation of this skin under different operating conditions will allow to establish optimal operation condition and that uh, will be useful for these uh, applications. Well, let's uh, describe our methodology. First, we make um, a, a deeper uh, analysis of the operation of uh, the photocapitans uh, discard effect. Uh, this uh, is the flow diagram of the typical algorithm used for the measurement of time discard of the um, of these systems. In the initial phase, the GPU terminal is uh, set as height, and the uh, and is set a delay to allow the charging of the uh, cap capacitance of the uh, LED detector. Uh, once uh, in, in these times, uh, in this instance, an uh, internal timer of microcontroller is started, and uh, the time uh, in a timer, um, a internal timer of, of verifier of the microcontroller is start, and a set GPU input is set as uh, as input, and the discharge time is uh, recording until uh, the time the uh, GPU is pulling the state, the, the state until the voltage reach a value uh, below the minimal voltage to detect that is a um, uh, log logical height. When this voltage is uh, less than this um, level, the timer uh, counter is stopped and the value of uh, this uh, discard time is uh, recorded. Well, and in a deeper uh, function, we um, detect that uh, in the instance where uh, is pulled pull it, uh, the internal, the, the, the logic at the state of the, dete of the, of the, the, the detector, uh, uh, there is uh, additional time that is uh, added to the operation, to the uh, recording time. Uh, this is produced to the time required for the microcontroller to detect the pulling of the terminal and to stop the um, and to stop the, the the timer. This uh, component that uh, affect the accuracy of the measurement. Uh, can be reduced if we increase the clock frequency of the microcontroller. However, this produces an uh, increase of power consumption, consumption of the microcontroller. Well, another uh, effect that is uh, detected on the operation of this system is the sensitivity of the system is um, affected by the light intensity of the meter diode. Uh, we had a key here um, and a simulation of the value of the timer count counter produce a different light emitter, uh, emit light intensity of meeting, uh, meeting diode. Uh, and this is um, uh, the the report a uh, function that describes the timer count value in as a function of the optical uh, factor of the sample analysis that is correlated, for example, to concentration or absorbance, and tau is uh, a constant that is related to the intensity of the LED emitter. If we increase this value, we, we can see at the low absorbance uh, value, we had a higher sensitivity. But um, at, at, 
a low absorbance where the lay uh, emitter lead is is higher we you, we produce less um, uh, sensitivity on the timer counter and then there is necessary to establish what is the optimal intensity for lead emitter this is our experimental system uh, scheme uh, we use the microcontroller stm f03 and and the, the LED detector is uh, attached to terminal PDO as JPO inter, internal input output. And uh, we had um, a, current <coughs> a current source controlled by PW uh, signal produced by an additional timer. And <coughs> this is for uh, the, in order to establish a variable current and we can probe the the response of the system at different intensity of the LED detector. And also we include a Bluetooth transceiver for a data transfer to computer. This is the, the physical um, uh, image of our system and we can see our uh, a cell holder we when where we could put the the sample analyzer and the and the lead uh, detector and the lead emitter and they are attached to one side or other of the optical path and these are these are the samples we use for calibration of the systems and uh, we have cell samples of for um turbid measurements and use, uh, we use uh, formats in the standard, and we um, use a serial dilution to obtain a serial, uh, a, a different scales of uh, in turbidity values. And uh, we uh, also uh, evaluate the system and um, different, different uh, uh, operation, in this case, for biomass concentration estimation for a micro guy. Uh, spirulina platensis, uh, what is using for biotechnological bio bio application, and some is using uh, uh, also in a uh, food industry. For results, <clears throat> well, we have uh, here the response of our uh, system, and in, in this case, the time current values of tanks. Uh, a different values of uh, turbidity of the samples of formacins at uh, three different values of the uh, current emitter of lead emitter. Uh, we can see uh, that uh, the low values of uh, uh, current uh, supply of lead emitter and then uh, low light em emission we had a higher sensitivity, but uh, the um, dispersion of our measurements is higher. This is uh, produced by the low uh, signal to no radio uh, levels. And in a high values intensity, we had a less um, um, a dispersion and bad, less sensitivity. And then we established the 10 mil, uh, million pairs, an optimal uh, value for um, <clears throat> For um, um, establish the me or measurements, and this is the cooperation obtained for biomass concentration measurements. Uh, and we uh, see the same um, uh, behavior, and then we sell it to the 10 millimeter, uh, 10 milliampers for our measurements. Well, our fitting function we obtain for calibration for me uh, turbidity measurement and biomass estimation. It uh, has these forms. It's a logarithmic form with uh, fitting coefficient, two fitting coefficients, and the y function that can be, uh, can be established at um, turbidity uh, as nephelometric uh, uh, units and um, or uh, biomass concentrations. The coef um, um, determination co coefficient, r squared, uh, it indicates a uh, good fit or this function for our measurements. They were uh, obtained at three different values of clock frequency, uh, 8 MHz, 32 MHz, and 72 MHz operation. The maximum is specified by the, by the uh, manufacturer of this microcontroller. 
Uh, then uh, we uh, take uh, four um, different uh, values of turbidity and biomass concentration, different from that used for um, for um, <clears throat> for calibration, and we compare the the error uh, of the measurement obtained for um, from the reference values. And they had, we had here the results obtained at three different frequencies of four uh, uh, samples of four tests of the samples at three different values of turbidity at three different frequencies. And also we measured, measured the uh, power consumption of the microcontroller. And uh, we, uh, we can see an improve of the uh, precision uh, or, 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 and reduction of the a relative error, and, um, and we see that the increase or, or reduction, for, uh, excuse me, the reduction of the um, error is not as um, is not um, valuable in higher frequency. Then uh, we can see that this uh, frequency of 32 megahertz could be suitable for um, or application and. And, and for the biomass concentration, we see the same behavior, a similar behavior, and we uh, see that the error, error is not reduced significantly at higher frequency, and the power consumption, consumption is increasing. And this is uh, valuable, the power consumption for battery powered and portable instruments uh, applications. Where then uh, we can see that is uh, necessary the further um, further uh, um, investigation on also the optimal uh, application of, of this of this scheme, and uh, we um, uh, propose to evaluate this application at the evaluation of different frequencies uh, at different application. For example, uh, PhD measurement. Uh, or, or other application uh, reporting in the bibliography. Um, uh, this is all the uh, presentation. Uh, I, I appreciate your attention. Do, do you have any questions? Thank you, Juan de Dios. What is your next step in this research? Okay, uh, we are um, evaluating the application to um, in integrate this scheme in a sensor node for a monitoring, for example, in this case of uh, Spironia platensis. There are um, applications where the, uh, there are a culture of spirulina in a large area, and we uh, put uh, this node in different zones of the culture in the outside. And it's required that this uh, use a, a wireless uh, sending data and battery power application, and, and the the the, the next uh, to do is the application in different nodes on our sensor node uh, network of this, of this uh, scheme. How are you going to calibrate your equipment or how are you going, can you compare your equipment with something commercial? Okay. Uh, and this scheme uh, has only reported in in, in laboratory, uh, but the conventional uh, system used for reference their spectrophotometers for measurement of um, uh, opt optical density. Uh, then this is not a, this is a nonlinear uh, measurement. Then uh, the correlation of these of these systems uh, could uh, is necessary to be evaluation as on uh, define or derivate um, a suitable uh, correlation function with these systems. Thank you, Juan. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate your attention. Effect of pressure from this during the Lumber Fest and presents our mission Velasquez. Buenas tardes, soy Ada Velasquez y el día de hoy les voy a hablar sobre. Ah, excuse me. Uh, it has to be in English, please, because we have international uh, attendance, uh, so we cannot do it in Spanish. I'm sorry. Let's start it. Uh, I... Who is going to present it? Someone else is going to present it? No. We have to present it in English. Yes, it is compulsory. Well, I suppose so. Is there anyone else in your team that can present the work? So, uh, some other authors? Mm. They are not here? No. So, uh, online, they cannot present it online? Uh, okay. Uh, we have a few minutes, so uh, it will not work. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
ya o sea, no se puso tu estadio. Y no, ya está como que me tengo una cuestión de perros de mejoradas, me pegué en la mochila también, hasta que le pago tu mensaje, pero que me puse hasta que lo que más capacita. A ver, ya, ¿no? ¿Qué te digo? Sí. Cada cual es el que se puede ser muy bien, no sé, es una cosa que se sabe. ¿Está doctorado? ¿Está doctorado? Uh, we are going to continue with our last presentation, but we are going to wait for a few minutes. The presentation um, for the effect of food position is going to be rescheduled. So we will wait for a few minutes to have our last presentation. Thank you for waiting.
Hello, um, can you hear us? Hello, Chisney, can you hear us? Yes, ma'am, I can hear you. Thank you. Uh, are you ready to start your presentation? Are you ready to start presenting? Can you start presenting? I do. Yes, ma'am. Wait a minute, please. Okay, whenever you are ready, please start sharing your presentation. Okay. Present. Our uh, last presentation today in this uh, by session three, and the title is Detection of Leg Tremors in Parkinson's Disease Patients and Experimental Wearable Leg Band Solution. And present NM Chisty. Hello, ma'am. I am audible. Hello. 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 Are you ready? You can start. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. You can start. Okay. Hello everyone, welcome to our presentation. This is Nur Mohammad Chishti, student, Department of EC, Institute of Science, Trade and Technology, ISTT. Our paper ID is 93 and paper title is Detection of Leg Tumors in Parkinson's Disease Patients and Experimental Wearable Leg Band Solution. Table of contents. In this, present, uh, in this presentation, um, we covered those contents, uh, introduction and literature review, methodology, data collection, sensor and signal processing, feature extraction and selection, data segmentation and labeling, classification algorithm, model training and testing, result and discussion, key findings, conclusion and feature work. Parkinson disease. PD is the second most common neurodegenerative condition, offering uh, affecting 7 to 10 million people worldwide. Diagnosing PD is challenging due to the absence of a specific test or biomarkers, often taking up to a year and relaying a neurologist review of medical history and clinical assessment. Ultimately, PD is a very dangerous disease. It is create lots, lots of problems 
problems such as tremor, loss of smell, muscle stiffness, slow movements, problem with bladder, and uh, finally they should depressed and anxious. That's why we thought develop a device to detect early symptoms uh, automatically and take early medication of PD patients. In this work, uh, me and my team uh, reviewed uh, lots of papers. Here we give some uh, reviewed papers. Uh, in, in reference, paper 20, they use accelerometer sensor, uh, stack feature 5, accuracy 83.6%, uh, models SVM ND. Uh, in reference, paper 21, uh, they use accelerometer, stack feature 4, accuracy 83.3%. Uh, uh, they use model CNN. Uh, in reference, paper 22, uh, they use accelerometer and magnetometer. Stack feature uh, 9, accuracy 78%. Uh, they use models light GBM RFC. Uh, in reference, paper 23, they use accelerometer and gyroscope. Uh, stack feature 20, accuracy 88%. Model SVM KNN. And in reference, Paper 24, they use EMG gyroscope, uh, stack feature 33, accuracy 84%, uh, models LOOCV uh, RF. Okay. Methodology. In this section, provide a detailed explanation of data collection process and preprocessing phase outcomes. In this, uh, in this work, in this work, we uh, covered different places in Dhaka city as a success, Dhaka Medical College Hospital, DMCS, and Center for Rehabilit uh, Rehabilitation of the Paralyzed CRP in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, in this work, we develop a device with Arduino Nano, ADXL 345 sensors, battery, charging module, memory module, and SD card. Uh, and we get raw data from PD patients and uh, healthy patients, healthy uh, volunteers. Okay, we got uh, 100 hertz uh, sampling frequency data. Then we uh, ac signal acquisition, uh, data filtering and normalization. For data filtering, we use 0 0.1 cutoff frequency high pass filter. Then data segmentation and feature extraction and uh, feature selection. Then we use uh, data labeling. Data labeling are two categories, uh, Timur L1, no Timur L0. Okay, then we use ML models uh, for Timur L1 and no Timur L0. Okay. Data collection protocol. In this section, we have description of tasks for PD patient and healthy subjects. Uh, task one, sitting with leg relaxed. Uh, we have been take data from patients uh, two plus minus one minutes. Uh, task two, standing still. Uh, data taking duration three plus minus one minute. Uh, task three, heel to toy, standing. Uh, data taking duration, two plus minus one minute. Uh, is task four, slow walking. Uh, data uh, taking duration, uh, three plus minus one minutes. And uh, final task, task five, leg elevation. Leg elevation, we have been take data from patients three plus minus one minutes. Okay. Uh, sensor signal processing. 
uh, here we can see the green uh, green line is x axis uh, orange line is y axis and z line uh, z axis is yellow lines okay uh, in our work we use a device and we uh, we use adxl 345 sensor uh, ads adxl 345 sensor has three axes x y and z axis x y or z axis okay here uh, figure a is no tree mode signal and figure b is tree mode signal these are extraction and selection uh, we use adxl adxl uh, 345 sensor and three uh, adxl 345 sensor has uh, three axis uh, for each axis we extract uh, 15 fissures uh, the fissures has uh, root mean square max of absolute number of peaks mean absolute value spectrum energy wave length zero crossing mean to rms entropy entropy of spectrum average peaks range skewness energy variance across three axes and kurtosis uh, we have three axes that's why our total uh, extract feature is 45 okay uh, the dimension of the feature vector is three the magnitude of the acceler acceleration vector is given by the following equation here the x y and z represent the components of the acceleration along the three axis and uh, modulus a is the resultant magnitude of the acceleration vector okay here the 15 column for uh, 15 15 stack features uh, data from healthy volunteers we are categorized as no tremor no tremor and we uh, take it level zero uh, here same as uh, 15 column for 15 stacked features and uh, the data from pd patients we are categorized as labeled uh, we are categorized or labeled as l1 so uh, classification algorithm we know uh, classification algorithm are two types uh, supervised learning algorithms and unsupervised learning algorithms Super, uh, supervised learning algorithm has decision tree dt discriminant analysis da naive bias classification nb logistic regression lr support vector machine sbm k nearest neighbor knn and ensemble classifiers uh, and unsupervised learning algorithm has k means principal component analysis pca hierarchical uh, clustering gaussian mixer model okay in our work we use supervised learning algorithms cross validation cross validation has three types fold out k fold leap on subject out loso loso is an uh, iteration method This method was employed for a study involving 14 subjects. In the first iteration, 13 subjects were used for training and 14 subjects were used for testing. And this process uh, repeated for each subject. Performance matrices. Uh, for determined performance matrices, we use following uh, equations for accuracy. Here, Tp is true positive and Tn is true negative. 
and fp is false positive and fn is false negative uh, here sensitivity specificity precision recall and f1 score we determine Performance matrix analysis using control search. Okay. Accuracy control search. Here, performance matrix analysis using control chart. Accuracy for no remote here the figure a is accuracy uh, for no remote and figure b is accuracy for remote and figure c is uh, f1 score for no remote and d figure d is f1 score for remote uh, result and discussion uh, here we can see uh, discriminant analysis DA, LD or linear discriminant uh, is the uh, give the accuracy 89.5 percent, uh, sensitivity is 89.7 percent, specificity 89.9 percent, uh, precision 90.1 percent, recall uh, 89.1 percent, F1 score. 90.4 percent and here you can we can see nearest neighbor classifiers knn fine k nearest neighbor uh, accuracy 93 98.3 percent sensitivity 98.5 percent specificity 98.7 percent precision 98.8 percent recall 98.0 percent and F1 score is 98.9%. Model training, accuracy and validation loss. Here we can see the blue line is training accuracy and red line is validation accuracy uh, in figure b we can see the red uh, line is validation loss and uh, blue line is training loss okay for figure a the training accuracy is 90 0.98 percent 98 while the validation accuracy is 0.97 uh, in figure B, the training loss is below 0 0.05 and validation loss is uh, under 0 0.03, 0 0.035 in the data set. Confusion matrix for all models. Okay. Here, table one, uh, table A, training confusion matrix for FKNN. FKNN uh, model classified uh, 2,209. Uh, no remote uh, during training with uh, 10, 10 FP or false positive and 16 FN for false negative and uh, 1177 true negatives. Here uh, for testing confusion matrix for KNN, uh, it classified uh, 207. Uh, no remote with uh, two false positive, uh, three false negative, and uh, 151 true negatives. Okay. Uh, for 
table C training confusion matrix for LD. Prediction classes is uh, for LD model classified 2192 uh, node remote correctly during training with uh, 27 false positive, uh, 73 false negative, and uh, 1120 true negatives. Okay. Uh, for testing, confusion confusion matrix for LD linear discrimination linear discriminant okay it con uh, classified uh, 195 no trimmer with nine false positive uh, 16 false negative and 143 true negatives Key findings and yeah, comparison yeah, with related work. Okay. Performance of the uh, different classifiers. Gaining accuracy of F and fine canary sniver is 98.4%. Testing accuracy of uh, fine canary sniver is 98.3%. Training accuracy of LD low linear discriminant is 90.1%. Testing accuracy of uh, linear discriminant is 89.5%. Uh, uh, here comparison, uh, our result is very high uh, from given uh, reviewed papers. Okay. Conclusion, the linear discriminant LD uh, model had the lowest accuracy at 89.5%, but as if a high F1 score of 90.4%. The fine KN, uh, fine KNN model demonstrated the best performance with the highest accuracy of 98.3% and F1 score of 90 98.9%. Future work and limitation. Uh, future work could focus on using wearable over extended periods. Uh, periods of together long term data. This data could help clinic, clinic uh, clinicians track disease uh, progression, medication efficiency, and patient response to treatments. Uh, here are the references. Thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation. Do we have any questions here in the hall? No questions? Uh, I have a question, Chisti. Why did you decide to place your sensors on the feet? We develop uh, a small size device and we bend uh, the legs, feet, and uh, knees for patients, uh, pretty patients. Add the markers, and you can see. Okay, this so the sensors are on the feet or on the legs? Yes, uh, you can see uh, here the block diagram, Arduino Nano and ADXL sensors. Uh, it's combined and uh, we bend the uh, patient's legs and knees. Okay, I can see. Thank you. Uh, any other questions here? Thank you, Chisti, for your presentation. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. With this presentation, we finish our session. I hope to attend the
sessions tomorrow and on Friday too. Thank you very much for being here. Goodbye. No, mañana es para la frente. En la tarde. Ay, no me llevo. ¿Quién presenta? No me espanten. No.